Hello. Please tell me you can hear me. I can me. hear you. Hey, Jacob, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty great now that I'm talking to you. How are you? I can't wait to talk to you about this book. <laughs> <laughs> we are such dorks. We're such dorks, and it's the best. Like, I am literally cheesing in my living room right now. It is awesome. It is so much fun. I love this. I love talking to you about books, and I love talking to you about Fallout. Who's it by? It's by Gwenda Bon. It was published this year, like just a month or two ago, I think. It features Lois Lane, a uh, high school-aged Lois Lane, and her early adventures in reporting, I suppose. Yes. I think this is probably her first adventure in reporting that we know of. Yeah. And we're going to talk about the plot and the characters and everything. So if you don't like spoilers, stop this now. Read the book, which is a pretty quick read, and come back and listen to it. And then next... Next time, we're going to talk about Ellen Raskin's classic novel, The Westing Game, published in 1978. So if you want to get a jump on that, you can read that as well. It's one of my all-time favorites, so I recommend it wholeheartedly to all listeners and all humans. Um, if you are alive and can read, I would like you to read this book. Yeah, New World. I would say that aliens, aliens also should read it. They probably should. They need to know. Uh, so let's get to it. P.S. Y'all, this is a love like crazy. Yeah, love you like crazy. As we do. So you said you had a lot to say about it. I do have a lot to say about it. I think, um, you know, I really liked the premise of the book. Mm -hmm. I love Lois Lane. You know, I love this whole, you know, just like um, in Nancy Drew, this you know, young woman who's going to find the truth. And, and that's amazing. But man, there was a lot of like silliness about this book that I was like, oh that's right it is based on a comic book no wonder it's sort of off the wall ridiculous in some places an example um would be a navi uh-huh a navi is you know, one of the the characters in the book who um was a champion speller before she um aged out of the spelling competitions and she just has a vocabulary that's ridiculous and i'm sorry even the smartest people i went to high school with didn't sound like walking dictionaries sure but the fact that she you know was very proper and and only spoke in in big words and used proper diction was like oh jeezy crazy this is ridiculous like come on nobody talks like this nobody talks like this and i don't know what the author was was trying to do with that but i was like for fuck's sake, really? Well, I think um, all of the characters who aren't Lois have kind of specific things about them. I think that that sort of, I mean, I guess it's pretty comic booky, but attempts at characterization, you know. So, yeah. and and in her particular case, I think part of it is so that when she's taken over by the hive mind, and that kind of goes away, to sort of emphasize that. And then I think doesn't she say does at some point she uses some big word even while in the hive mind and Lois takes that as evidence that maybe she's you know that she's still in there someplace. I don't think I noticed that, but probably. I might be wrong. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, you know, Maddie's got her band shirt thing. Yeah, and and Devin is Devin. Right. And the he sure is. And the third is you know just walking money. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. Everyone is sort of a caricature of who they're supposed to represent, I suppose. But, you know, it, it's a bit it much. caught me off guard a little bit. I was like, come on. Like, mm -hmm. if you want us to read a YA book, like, we're not reading a comic book. It's based on a comic book, yes, but you don't have to be this heavy handed with it. Yeah, You don't have to do it. But for the most part, I really liked it. I thought, you know, Lois had a lot of spunk. Mm -hmm. I thought she was certainly a tough broad that I wouldn't want to mess with. Sure. Because <laughs> she'd probably blow something up. <laughs> but um, I don't know. What did you think? Let's let's talk about what you thought. I kind of like that sort of the overarching thing. Well, there are a few overarching things, but she, you know, she comes to the, oh, this is something I liked. Hey, I finally <laughs> thought of something that I can actually say. So one thing I liked is, um, you know, in the first chapter, she shows up to the school. She has this confrontation with the principal 
uh, and so on. And then in the second chapter, she sort of, she talks about these rules that she's come up with to try to fit in at the new school. And at that time, she has already broken pretty much all of them. <laughs> yeah. Like, blend in, make friends. Yeah. Don't confront the principal. Be invisible. Yeah. And I think that that's kind of, you know, you are who you are. And so the, the book is kind of a story of how she figures out how she can make friends. Yeah. Without completely changing who she has, is as a person, which is basically what she was going to try to do. That's what her family would probably like for her to do, but I think they also appreciate her, you know, at least at the end, they appreciate her for who she is. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the fact that in, in the first chapter she figures out there's something wrong and, and gets a job was kind of a little ridiculous too where the other kids had to apply for this job and she's just handed this sort of prestigious job at the, the daily planet. Yeah. Although I don't think it's that prestigious. Like, no, it doesn't really seem like anyone wants to be there. Really? I don't know. I thought that they'd had to apply, but maybe you're right because nobody really did seem all that interested. Nobody had written anything, um, before they got, before Lois got there. Yeah. And the, except for Devin, who is, I guess the cool one, uh, they all seem a little bit like outcasts. Like, I don't really get a sense that Maddie has other friends or that James is, like, hanging out with, you know, people at the polo club or whatever. I thought he did have other friends because he was talking to um, Maddie's sister in the cafeteria. Oh, that's right. And Maddie was like, oh, my God, I just love him so much. <laughs> but didn't actually say those words because, you know, anyway. Um right. You don't. So, so he seems to have other friends, but maybe the others didn't. Although, you know, Devin, if he's cool, probably has other friends. Yeah, uh, right. Normally he hangs out at another table at the lunch, in the yeah, lunchroom. Yeah, that's and, right. But he, you know, like he kind of has a crush on Lois, it seems. And he's also, I don't know if he's friends with Anavi exactly, but he's concerned about her. Yeah. One thing that I thought was sort of interesting about this book is that it doesn't really take place in a parallel universe to ours and it doesn't take place in the future. So all of these things that are happening are happening now and in our present timeline as in, you know, where you and I are. And I thought that was really weird. Um, yeah. I think the only notes I made in my book were like, Oh, my fucking God. The author is a John Green fan. Oh, who's John Green? God damn it. John Green is the guy who wrote uh, The Fault in Our Stars and some other sappy books. Uh. And all of his fans are called Nerd Fighters. So that's how I figured out that this book was set in the present. Because at the, in the cafeteria... She mentioned that there was a table full of nerd fighters who were reading the latest book of their favorite author. And I was like, oh, oh, fucking dear God. The author is a fangirl. Wow. And that just made me roll my eyes and say everything that happens from here on out is in our current present. I, uh, I'm impressed with your investigative ability there. Why, thank you. Uh, I completely missed that. Regular Lois Lane. That's just because I happen to know what a nerd fighter is, and I noticed that, and then I rolled my eyes. So, I mean, that's a natural progression <laughs> right there. Roll eyes, take notes. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's what Lois would do. Should be, uh, I don't know, we should go on those conspiracy boards. And... I think we should. And you know who else we'd find on the conspiracy board? Superman. Smallville guy. <laughs> <laughs> So I have some things to say about that. I think you should say them. Okay. So um, I guess so basically uh, Lois and her dad were driving in Kansas or something. They certainly were. And they saw there was some kind of big explosion or something. And Lois saw a, a flying man. Yeah. And so she started going to these kind of conspiracy boards to see if anyone else had reported anything like this. And while she's there, she runs into this guy who uh, identifies himself as Smallville guy who, while she is Skeptic Girl 1, because uh, Skeptic Girl was already taken, I guess. <laughs> 
and he says, "I can't really tell you what's going on, but I can, I can, I." I know that what you're re- describing is true. Why doesn't she automatically think, huh, I saw a, a flying dude, and this dude totally believes me, but he says he can't tell me why. I wonder if this mofo can fly. Well, that's a good question. Another question is because, <laughs> like, Smallville guy won't tell her who he is, you know, his name or anything, although she tells him hers. Yeah. Yeah. She basically tells him everything. Right. And he gives her a picture of a cow. Yeah. Well, I like the picture of the cow. <laughs> <laughs> cow named Nellie Bly. Um, so he's very secretive about himself. But then why would you pick your screen name to be Smallville Guy? <laughs> like, uh, let me just look onto the Smallville High School website. <laughs> yeah. Like how many... I don't know. I mean, it's called Smallville. How big can it be? (laughs) And she knows it's in Kansas. Yeah. And she is a reporter, so she could probably track this guy down if she can stop an evil government conspiracy. Right. And then when he shows up in the online game, like, he basically looks like Clark Kent. I thought he was green, though. Well, he was green, but he had short black hair and glasses. Yeah. Yeah. But he's also an alien, so he's referencing that. Yeah, that's it's pretty like, on the nose. By the way, just giving you all the information, just just you know, just follow the dots. And he had laser vision. <laughs> yeah, in the game. Yeah. If he's not, I mean, he's Superman, but he's not like made out of magic in that way, where he can just fix the game. Can he? Well, he said that he had. He said he got a bunch of cheat codes off us. Uh, yeah, off I'm sure. Some site somewhere. Yeah. But was, I, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. That didn't offend me or anything. I just thought it was Oh, it funny. didn't offend me. I just thought it was sort of funny. Like, how do you do this? It's pretty goofy. But I loved that he was there. I mean, I loved that, you know, it was like, oh, it's Superman and Lois. And this is how they met. But also, like, Smallville guy, come on. Just throw throw the lady a bone. You know, while the picture of the cow might be cute and all, um, this isn't going to last like this. You can't just have an online relationship and string the girl along. I hope she goes on a date with Devin. Yeah, that would be good. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, But I think, I mean, because, like, like, I mean, the timeline is a little confused because this seems to take place in the present. Roughly. Yeah, it has to. Which then Superman, you know, when Smallville Boy becomes actually Superman and Clark Kent moves to Metropolis, that's got to happen a few years later. So Mm -hmm. that's in the future now. Yeah. And then, so at that point, I mean, I would just think that at that point, Lois Lane would know that Clark Kent is Smallville I don't know. Smallville guy. I don't know. This stuff makes my head hurt. (laughs) (laughs) I think eventually she's going to figure it out. Probably when he's in Metropolis. Yeah. But exactly when that is, I don't know. You know, he knows where she works, so he'll find her. Any other things that you particularly liked or didn't like? I particularly liked Devin. I liked him a lot. And I liked him a lot for one reason. Mm -hmm. He was the king of this castle. And he had a dragon. And that is cool. I have no argument against that. (laughs) It's like, if I was going to be playing, I guess, the the, the non-metropolis version of World's War III, I was going to be playing World of Warcraft, Mm -hmm. I would want a castle. Yeah. And I would want a dragon. Like, those are two things that are required. Um, and Devin had them, and therefore I love him. I think he is funny. I think the fact that he is, you know, both smart and popular is cool. And I think the fact that he had a dragon is baller. Yep. And I, 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 I like that. I think if there was a book from his perspective, I would read the hell out of it. I don't know what it would be called. It might just be called My My Name is Devin and I Am Awesome. Yes. And that's what it would say on every single page. But I would still read it. All right. Note to Gwenda Bond if you listen to this. 
My name is Devin and I am awesome. It would be the sequel <laughs> we're looking for. <laughs> well, that's a sequel I'm looking for because Devin is awesome. Hands yeah. down. Awesome. I uh, I have to say that I enjoyed uh, Maddie and the, the kind of the re- reveal, I think two thirds of the way through the book that all of the band shirts that she wears are for bands that don't exist and that she just made the shirts. I knew that that was going to happen. It wasn't very well hidden. Because, <laughs> you know, when Lois is like, oh, I was listening to this CD you made me and none of, or whatever it is that she made her. I don't think it was a CD. They probably don't have CDs anymore. I don't know what the cool kids listen to. <gasps> um, but she was listening to the... MP3 player. The MP3 player that Maddie gave her um, of songs and huh none of the bands are on it surprise surprise no shit figured it out yeah so oh and i I also on on your end i hear something what is it i think someone's using a leaf blower or something okay because i was like i hear maybe a vacuum cleaner and dogs okay that would explain it um yeah and unfortunately i don't know that i can do (laughs) wait hold on a sec i'm gonna try doing something stupid oh no don't Yeah. What is the stupid thing you tried to do? Um, I'm draping a blanket over my head. <laughs> I was like, are you just like taking an Acme Labs anvil and like dropping it out the window or something? <laughs> what could Well, be? that also is tempting. <laughs> does that make it? Does this make any difference or can you still hear it? It's fine. Take the blanket off your head, you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> okay. It's off. There you go. <laughs> there you go, little champion. <laughs> oh, I'm such a dork. Anyway. <laughs> um, yes, you are, and it's amazing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what did you think about the kind of evolving relationship between Lois and uh, the third? I, I like the fact that, you know... The third wasn't just a one-dimensional douche canoe. Yeah. I like the fact that, you know, he opened up to her and she opened up to him. And that was nice. Um, I didn't really think much past the fact that, oh, yay, he's not just a spoiled rich asshole. Right. Homeboy's got feelings. Oh. <laughs> Poor little rich boy. Yeah, and, you know, the fact that he's like, oh, yeah, I guess you can have my little virtual reality headset thing. I don't need it because I guess I think you're cute because I'm probably going to have everybody thinking Lois is cute. I think I appreciated that neither of them liked the other, but as the thing went on, they both sort of came to realize that, you know, they didn't stick with their initial impressions entirely. Yeah, yeah. no, I think they ended um, up as, as friends, um, y- you know, whether it's begrudgingly or not. I think, you know, they both saw merit in the other. Right. And if this were like Twilight or something. You well, know, if this were Twilight, he would end up falling. He'd be a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He'd be a werewolf and he would fall in love with her. But uh, then, he'd, then he'd fall in love with her daughter. Just to be creepier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but not, none of those things happen. As far as we know, we'll see about the sequel. Yeah, like, this is just the beginning. We don't know about the future. Right. We have to see what happens in uh, My Name is Devin and I Am Awesome. <laughs> That's going to be the best book ever. I can't wait till it's written. It's going to have so many dragons. Oh, so I did, Well, I, I don't want to dominate the conversation too much. I had a couple of other things I wanted no, to... No, no, talk about them. Talk about them. Absolutely. All right. I want to hear. Uh, one is I wanted to ask you about Lois's outfit, first day of school outfit, as uh, described in the book, which I'll read. Uh, let's see. A slouchy boy in a baggy t-shirt held the door for me. That must mean my carefully selected ensemble of a plaid mini, black tights, and sweater with a small, cute skull and crossbones motif was okay. Aww. I'd been to enough new schools to know that people didn't hold doors if they thought you were dressed too weirdly. I think it sounds like an adorable outfit. Yep. And it sounds like maybe she got it in 1994. Sure. But I would totally wear it, like today, because it sounds awesome. Black tights, miniskirt, and a... Freaking 
Sweater with skull and crossbones? Hell yeah. There must be a, a pattern for that. I, I could knit that oh, sweater. You could knit that sweater. You could call it the lowest. Yes. Make it so... But yeah, I think for the most part, I really enjoyed this book. I think, you know, the author really knows her stuff in a way to make it believable. To make, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, so she knows her, her Superman history. She knows Lois. She knows enough about their world to be able to construct this book and make it not seem completely contrived. You know, I don't know much Superman either. I've saw, you know, I've seen the, the TV show Smallville. That's about, you know, the extent of my Superman-ness. I don't think I've read any of the comic books, maybe, you know, one or two over the years. But I think knowing of Superman and knowing, you know, living in the planet, I know who Superman is. I think she did a really good job doing her, her research. She knows her shit, and I think that's got to be commended. Not every author always knows their shit. Yeah, and I, I think the idea of having a book centered around, you know, a teenage Lois Lane is a really good one. Like, I like that idea. And that you can kind of see the roots of her later investigative reporting, you know, in, in this. I liked that a lot, and I thought that uh, she did a good job. I mean, this is, like, not an incredibly profound book or anything, but it's it's a it's a quick, you know, you can read it quickly, and it's... Fun and uh, yeah, I enjoyed. Yeah, it. I think it's super fun, and I would totally recommend this book to other people. Um, you don't have to be a Superman fan to to read it. Um, you just have to be a fan of of cool chicks doing cool things, and that's basically what Lois did. Um, you know, she stuck her neck out a lot and was pretty much a badass, and that's awesome. True fact. So uh, that's our discussion of. Fallout by Gwenda Bond. We both liked it and think you should check it out if you are so inclined. You should be inclined. So the next book that we're going to talk about. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now I got the church giggles. <laughs> Yay. The next book. So what book are we going to talk about next, Gary? I can't even talk. I've got tears running down my face for no reason. <laughs> we're going to read the Westing game. And it's by... Ellen Raskin is published in 1978. I think is generally regarded as a classic, um, which I would agree with. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. We <laughs> um, both love this book. And we're, we're planning to have a special guest. So I think that'll be fun. So read that book and join us next time for that. Oh, and I should say, if you enjoyed this episode in the past episodes, you should feel free to leave us a review on iTunes and stuff uh, because we'd love to hear from you. And if people leave rev reviews, then that helps other people find it. Um, iTunes will put it higher up in the rankings and whatnot. So and yeah, thanks to the sentimental favorites for letting us use their song. Hey there for our theme. And thanks to Charlie McCarran for the little love. Why like crazy.com staying at the end. And thanks to Carrie for talking to me about books, which I love doing whenever we do it. I know. It's the best. Books are awesome, y'all. Talking to Jacob is awesome, y'all. <laughs> talking to Carrie is even better. I mean, it's not as awesome as Devin, but that's okay. That's true. All right. Talk to you again soon, I hope, Carrie. I will talk to you soon. Absolutely. It's going to be awesome. Give me a call when you get back. Hey there. Hey. Love, I, 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 crazy. Crazy. Dot com.